this time we will have observed the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is an ordinance which Christ himself established the night before he was crucified. And because his death paid the price for the sins of believers, he wants believers to keep this ordinance in order to remember him, to proclaim his death, and the bread that we partake represents his body. The cup that we drink represents his blood. It also is a time for us to examine ourselves and to repent of any sins which, for which he paid such a tremendous cost. This morning, we're going to be looking at a passage of scripture that has been called an early call to the church to repent. It's in, found in the fourth chapter of the epistle of James. The book of James was the first composition that we have, the earliest composition we have in our New Testament. Follow along as I read James chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud and gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. This passage is a call to repent of love for worldly pleasures which have replaced the love for God. The pursuit of fleshly pleasures has resulted in quarreling and fighting and doing harm to one another. It has been a reason for prayerlessness, and even when there is prayer, it's unanswered because it was offered to obtain to obtain things to satisfy one's own selfish desires. This is called spiritual adultery. Just as an unfaithful wife, the church had been unfaithful to her, the Lord who purchased them to be his people. They called friendship with the world. This is called friendship with the world. And friendship with the world brings one into enmity with God. In fact, he even opposes them. The call to the repentance is introduced by the question, do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us. Spirit here is best understood as the human spirit that God has placed within us. Scripture repeatedly expresses the idea that God has a jealousy and it jealously, he desires the devotion of the people whom he has redeemed. When, he, when his redeemed people let other things replace their love for him, God opposes them. But in spite of the opposition which God must have against spiritual adulteresses, it, he gives a greater grace. To those who, who turn from the proud pursuit of sinful pleasures and humbly pursue God, God will give grace. He will even respond by drawing near when we draw near to him. Repentance has two aspects. 
cleansing from wrong outward behavior, that is cleaning our hands, and purifying from inward divided loyalty, that is purifying our hearts. The mourning, the weeping, and the gloom that he commands is in regard to our sin. What sadness it should cause us to realize that we've been entertaining the very sins for which Christ died. And the joy that God gives, he gives to those whose sins are forgiven. Finally, he says, humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you. How much better it is for God to exalt us than for us to exalt ourselves. Christian, after you have examined yourself and directed your heart toward the Lord, you may partake of the bread in the cup. The men will place a packet in your hands containing the communion elements. Please cup your hands so that they may place this packet into your hand. The packet has two seals. The first thin seal covers the wafer, and the second seal covers the juice. If you're here and are not a believer, we ask that you not participate in the Lord's Supper. It is a ordinance for believers. But we do want you to understand that God has love for sinners enough that he would send his son to die for them. And he, he, uh, we, we want you to understand and to know that there is forgiveness and there is eternal life in his son. And if you would like to know more about this, please seek us out. We're here to help. The men may now serve the Lord's, tape, uh, the Lord's Supper. In a few moments, I will return to dismiss with a brief prayer.